So a net present value is the difference between the present value of cash inflows and the present value of cash outflows for a project or an investment. Uh, the formula that we're going to be using is this. We have NPV is equal to A0 plus this all this summation stuff. Uh, so first of all, A0 here, this is going to be the initial investment of the, you know, the investment or the, the initial cost of the project that we want to do. So let's just say that this is the initial cost. Okay, uh, now the way that I've written this formula, this has to be a negative number. Sometimes people will write this term minus this term. Um, if you add them, then just make sure that you enter this one as a negative number. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is the initial cost. Now this term over here is going to deal with the you know the annual the annual stuff that we have going on with the project. So this A N, uh, this is going to be your annual net cash flow. So I'll just write this down for us. So you have it, annual net cash flow. Uh, this is basically just going to be the added benefit minus the added cost of the project. So imagine the project we have is you're a civil engineer and you want to buy a tractor or backhoe, uh, you know, so you can dig a big hole for a building foundation or something like that. So the initial cost here would be the cost of your tractor. And then the annual net cash flow would be basically the added benefit is how much you're billing your client for it minus the added costs like, you know, how much do you have to pay the driver and the maintenance and the fuel and stuff like that. Okay, so we're going to increment this from the first year till the last year of the project. So this N here will be the last year. So we can also say that this is the, the service life in years. So we'll just write this down. Service life in years. So maybe you're going to be digging this, this hole for three years or something like that. Um, then this service life here would just be three. All right, so then this N here, this would just be, you know, whatever year we're looking at uh, that corresponds to the annual net cash flow. Uh, for example, maybe the driver's a little bit slow in the first year and then speeds up in the second. You might make less in the first year and then you could, you know, move more dirt and, you know, make more in the next year. So you would increment correspondingly. Uh, this guy over here, this I, we say the I, this is equal to M A R. R. This is the minimum acceptable rate of return. So you can think of this um, basically as like an annuity. Um, this we're talking about net present value. Uh, so if you imagine, you know, if you have the present value of an annuity, you have some sort of interest rate that you're making. So if we want to make some sort of return on our investment, well, maybe your company has a policy where you have to make 12% return on your investment. Well, then you would set this I is equal to 0.12. All right, so this is the general form of the formula. We're also actually, we're, we're, this is actually assumes that uh, we would have no salvage value for the, this tractor that we're buying. Um, but don't worry about that. We're just going to assume, yeah, that at the end of this three years or something, this tractor will be so beat up that we can't even sell it for scrap metal. Um, that's something else. Some people would add in that term, but we're just going to make that assumption that there's no salvage value. All right, so um, there's a there's a handy thing though, like this one. This is really easy to solve in Excel or in a spreadsheet. But if you're on a test, you obviously don't have that luxury. This would kind of take a long time. You know, if there's ten or twenty years. Um, but you'll see that you know if your teacher sets the question so that the annual net cash flow is the same each year, we can actually rewrite this in a different way for that special case. So this is where we would say the net present value is equal to a naught. Remember, this is still that negative quantity. Uh, now we all we would do is we would just add the present value of an annuity formula. So we would have A times, now this A here, this is our annuity, but this is going to be our annual net cash flow because it would be the same each year. Again, this is for a special case only. Uh, so then we would have 1 minus 1 plus I to the power of negative N all over I. Again, we're still using this minimum acceptable rate of return for our I. All right, so now there's three things that can happen. We can have our net present value uh, well, first of all, if it's equal to zero, that means that this term is going to equal this term. Now, that doesn't mean that we've no that doesn't mean that we haven't made any money. Uh, we've already made we've already accounted for that twelve percent that we want to earn here, right? Or whatever percentage it is. Let's just assume twelve. Uh, so, if NPV is equal to zero, you can tentatively accept this project. Um, uh, because you will make you know, the minimum acceptable rate of return. You know, ideally you want to make more, but at least this is still acceptable. You know, based on your company's policies, so we can tentatively accept this project. Um, now, if we have a net present value that's greater than zero, 
Well, that means that this term is going to be bigger than this term, right? Because we're getting a positive value. So that means that, well, if we were making our minimum acceptable rate of return when we hit zero, then we're actually going to make more than our minimum acceptable rate of return. And that's good. You know, your boss will be happy with you. So you should definitely uh, accept this project. Right? And if you were faced with a decision where you had two projects to choose from, one of them had net present value of zero, one of them was greater than zero, obviously you want to take the higher one. Okay, and then the last thing here, uh, we could have a net present value that has a value of less than zero, a negative quantity. Well, that would just mean that you know our initial cost is greater than this term. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to lose money. It could, but it doesn't necessarily mean that. Uh, it just means that for sure your minimum acceptable rate of return uh, you're not going to meet that so if you were looking if you're shooting for 12 percent you know you might be getting eight percent or something so you're still making money on your investment for this project but um, it's not exactly meeting the minimum amount that your company requires so you would actually have to reject uh, reject this and you know hopefully just find something else that's going to be at least zero or greater all right, I will see you in the next video and we'll actually go over a real example with real numbers about net present value.